All right, thank you for coming today uh, on this special day as we introduce the sixth head coach in Mississippi State soccer history. Uh, our format for today's press conference is as follows. We will bring up Director of Athletics John Cohen, who will introduce our new head coach uh, following his statement. We will take questions from the media here in attendance only. We ask that questions come from the media only. Please raise your hand, state your name and affiliation so coach can get familiar with you. It is now my pleasure to introduce the Director of Athletics at Mississippi State, John Cohen. All right, good morning. What an exciting day this is for us. Welcome a new member of the Mississippi State family. Um, before I, I talk a little bit about our, our new soccer coach, I just want to thank um, our soccer staff they did a great job. Josh and, and Jerry, I don't know if you're here, but what an incredible job you did holding our entire uh, soccer crew together. And from a recruiting standpoint, from a practice standpoint, we just really appreciate them. I appreciate the, uh, the group administratively we put together, um, led by Jared Benko, to, uh, to help us find the right candidates around the country. And it was a national search, uh, for sure. And I want to thank all of you for being here. And I think we have some of our soccer team here today. Can you raise your hand if we have some soccer? Thank you guys very much for being here. <laughs> you know, I, I want to mention this. When, when we went through this process, it was not amazing to me, but the outpouring of folks who were interested in this position, and I told this to our soccer team just a few weeks ago, the reason why there was so much interest in this position is because what has happened to our soccer program over the last two years, and these young ladies who are with us today, they're a huge part of that. So thank you for what you've done on the field and in the classroom, and thank you for taking this program to a new level, ladies. Um, what were we looking for? We were looking for someone who had SEC uh, success, not just experience, but success. Um, what Coach Armstrong did as a cornerstone, as a member of the coaching staff, at Auburn University is pretty remarkable when you talk about a final eight appearance, when you talk about a, a sweet 16 appearances in the sport of soccer in a program that had never been to those heights before. So not only has Coach Armstrong been a part of the Southeastern Conference, he's been very successful within the Southeastern Conference at a program that really rebuilt itself. Um, and, and that was one of the main things we were looking for. Um, we, we wanted someone who had a deep appreciation for what had just happened on our own campus. And, and when you talk about James, it's a, one of the first things he talked about is what has happened here in our soccer pro program. And he went bit by bit, detail by detail, explaining to us how we got where we were, where we are, and uh, he'd done his homework. There's no question about that. We were looking for somebody who has integrity. There's only one way to do it, to be successful, and that's with integrity. And uh, Boy, we, we made so many phone calls and talked to so many people about Coach Armstrong, and for sure he fits that bill. We needed somebody who was passionate. Um, that's an emotion that I have a difficulty uh, reaching out toward and putting my arms around. Um, I, uh, I've, I've been accused of, uh, you know, helping officials and things of that nature in my own career, but we needed somebody to lead our soccer program with passion. And, and we feel like we had that. Along with passion, obviously, work ethic is everything because a huge portion of what you do as a coach in the best league in America, the Southeastern Conference, is you have to recruit at a very high level. And you can only do that with an incredible work ethic. Um, he has recruited at the highest level. If you look at the list of the kids that he has brought to Auburn University and you, you look at what he's already on to in terms of our next classes at Mississippi State, uh, really, really exciting. Um, we were looking for somebody who really understood the nature of a winning culture. And you hear that word over and over again, and it's really hard to put your arms around and identify and point at. It's one of those things, uh, like something else we've all heard of, it's you know it when you see it. And we certainly saw that in Coach Armstrong. And we needed someone who believed in academic success, and, and already our soccer program has set a high watermark for academic success at Mississippi State University. We want that to continue, and Coach Armstrong really, really got that throughout the entire process. So I wish that his lovely wife, Casey, could have been here today, and his beautiful daughter, Olivia, who's quite active um, and, and just a blast to be around. 
Um, we wish they could be here today, but I'm sure they're frantically packing it up. But please help um, me welcome uh, the sixth head soccer coach at Mississippi State University, Coach James Armstrong. I used to have one of these that said Arsenal on it when I was about nine years old, but this one's better because it says Hale State on it, so I'm going to give this to James. Thank you, sir. To James, and I'm going to give James what we always give. You're officially part of the family, Coach Armstrong, when, when you have one of these cowbells. Brilliant. So we'll teach you how to use it right now. You know what you're doing? I do. Okay, good deal. Good deal. Hale State. Firstly, I'd like to thank everybody for coming. What an unbelievable turnout, and that's one of the main reasons I'm here. The community, the support of everybody that I've met so far has been absolutely phenomenal. Um, obviously, would like to thank the entire search committee, particularly Jared Benko, John Cohen, Jay Logan, um, for making me feel so welcome, but not only that, making my family feel so welcome. Um, they're as excited as I am to join this unbelievable community. Um, John talked about <clears throat> my understanding and familiarity with the program and the, the league. Clearly what these young ladies have done in the classroom and on the field over the last two years has really built the foundations for something that can be really special. And I know that we're going to bring in some new ideas. Um, we're going to move forward quickly. I uh, can't wait to start working with the girls on the field today. Um, the staff's in place now. So we're really looking forward to, to moving forward at a quick pace. But the excitement, humbled to be here, cannot wait to get started. So thank you to everyone. Really appreciate it. And would love to answer any questions that you may have. Hey, Coach, welcome. Joel Coleman, Starfield Daily News. Coach Cohen had talked about uh, just you had saw what the program had done here uh, over the last few years. What, what have you seen that, that was able, that enabled Mississippi State to develop the success it now ha has had hosting an NCAA tournament things? What things do you, do you think need to be done or to, to sustain that success moving forward? Well, thank you for the question. I'll, I'll take it a couple of steps at a time. Firstly, I think there was a belief, self-confidence in, in the current group of players. And you could tell that they had a work ethic, a competitive standard that they were clearly all pushing in the same direction and fighting for one another, that blue collar mentality, and that really stood out. They were a team that nobody wanted to play over the last two years, particularly here in Starkville. The community, the, the fan support, the noise, soccer crowd, um, they'd really established that support as well. So they were a team that nobody wanted to play. Obviously, I was brought in here to continue that success, Something that I'm very passionate about is working to get better every single day. You're either getting better or you're, you're losing ground. So what we're going to do, my staff and I, because obviously the staff is a, is a huge part of it, the coaching staff but also the support staff, is making sure that we maintain those high standards and we want to obviously bring in our own ideas as to, to how we can have even more success moving forward. Good morning, Coach. Uh, Adam Minichino from the Commercial Dispatch. Uh, humble beginnings. Uh, if you look at your resume, you could almost chart a Hollywood movie from, <laughs> from the course of equipment manager through uh, club ranks all the way up to, to today. Um, maybe an abridged version of how you started and maybe some of the philosophies that helped you get to this point? Absolutely. That's, that's a, a great question. So you're, you're right. I, I have, I've done it all. You know, and, and I've thoroughly enjoyed the process and I've embraced the process. And, you know, I started off as the equipment, ma equipment manager for the youth national teams um, as soon as I graduated college. And then I moved on to the full national teams and, and that allowed me to see the highest level of competition and, and, and see how the top coaches in the, in the country worked and top coaches in the world worked. So that established my passion for, for coaching and really made me realize this is what I wanted to do. And so I then went into the youth game and really, in the youth game, it's excellent because you do so many training sessions and you can learn your trade. 
So working with anywhere from under, under, eight, under eights to all the way through to under 18s, um, that leading those programs, being director of those programs, dealing with parents, dealing with tryouts and all those kind of things really helped me. And then I always knew that eventually college was, was my, the direction I wanted to take. And Coach Hopper, who has been an unbelievable mentor for me, um, the people that she has produced in her, from her programs have been phenomenal, have gone on to do phenomenal things. So I'd always known her through the youth national team days and she gave me the opportunity and I embraced it and just ran with it from there. And, and here I am, I felt this was the obvious next progression and being able to go through all the things that I've gone through from, from bottom to now here has, has allowed me to be ready for anything. So appreciate the question. Coach, uh, I'm Garrett Smith. I'm with the uh, student newspaper, The uh, Reflector. Um, we've just been talking about your coaching experience. Uh, what, uh, what part of that experience, you know, uh, what team would you say um, is going to be most helpful uh, going forward with this team? So I think all of the teams that I've worked for have, prepared, have helped prepare me for this moment. Obviously, the, the team that I was just working with at Auburn University is, is the one that is most comparable to this level. Um, so, so definitely... Everything that I did with them will prepare me to work with these girls. Uh, and the offensive side of the game was, was a huge part for me there at Auburn. Uh, we had unprecedented success on, on that side of the ball. Um, definitely looking forward to, to hopefully bringing a more attacking style, um, scoring more goals, creating more opportunities. That's not to say they didn't do a good job of that last year, but it's something that looking at it, I feel I can really help with. Um, but also, you know, defensive on both sides of the ball, very comfortable with it. So Auburn, to answer your question, Auburn, my experience there will help me prepare the most for this next step, but all of them have helped along the way. Good question. You kind of touched on it a little bit with your experience at Auburn, but uh, ideally you're going to fit your system into your personnel. Obviously the kids coming back or the student athletes coming back are not yours per se, but when you ultimately get the kids into your system, what system do you envision that? What, what um, more offensive, more possession, more direct, more defensive? You can kind of three, four, three, <laughs> throw all the numbers out there. But yeah. What style? So I'm a great believer in being realistic rather than idealistic. So my first day was yesterday. Got to see the girls train. The, the energy around the, the training field was unbelievable. The intensity was fantastic. Um, the, the, the job, the immediate job for my staff and I is to really evaluate the, the players that we have. They're our priority right now. And then obviously quickly learning the players, more about the players that are coming in. And, and then really starting to figure out how the, all the pieces of the puzzle come together. Um, I can tell you this, that we're going to go on the front foot. We're, we're going to want to press when the other team has the ball. We're going to want to win the ball high up the field. Um, we're going to look to, to counter we're going to quickly when we, can, when we can rip the ball off them high up the field. But in an ideal world, I'd like to say maybe a little bit more patient at times. But like I said, I, idealistically, we, we gotta, ideally, sorry, we've got to look at this and really take, uh, take a good look at what we've got. But the, the, the blue collar, work ethic, competing, pride in the shirt, all those kind of things are non-negotiables for, for myself and my staff. Hey coach, Tom Ebel from WCBI TV in Columbus. Your program reaching the NCAA tournament for the first time here at Mississippi State. In your vision, what's the next step? Or what's the realistic next step for your taking over a program that had that sort of success? I mean, that's a great question. Obviously, to, to make it back to the NCAA tournament is a priority, but then go beyond that. You know, obviously, they had a, a, a disappointing result in the first round. I know talking to the girls, they would love that game back. Um, we want to make sure that we get back to that level and then go on from there. Making the SEC tournament, that, that's a priority as well. You know, they haven't been there since 2004. So making sure that they, they get to experience that. You know, and I know that talking to the girls as well, that is something that's a priority for them. So taking each day, getting better each and every single day, but the overall aims is to, to make the SEC tournament and make a good run in that, 
and then obviously make it into the NCAA tournament again and, and make it further than we did last time. We're, we're very fortunate that we're in the best conference in the country, so every game is competitive. So that's great for RPI standpoint and, and things like that. So we're obviously in a, a great position there. You've said, you said you did, uh, did done it all and you've done a little bit of everything. How, how do you think that that experience is going to help you in, in your new position and, um, and not knowing what it is to be like a head coach in the SEC, what do you foresee being the biggest challenges that you'll encounter? I'll address the point that you just made, never being a head coach in the SEC. Um, the, the one thing that I, that I would say is that I know I'm ready for this. My, my mentor, Coach Harper, knows that I was ready for this too. And so I've been a head coach for every team other than Auburn. So leading people, um, leading you know, the, the support system behind those people, um, I'm very familiar with. So that, that's one thing that, that I would, would answer that, that part of the question to. So even though the head coach experience isn't necessarily there at the collegiate level, I was helping Coach Harper with everything, every aspect that a head coach would have to, to be involved in. The one difference would be I now get to make the final decision. And that's obviously the most important, important piece that um, I'm more than ready for so, and excited for. Could you repeat the question? Sorry. Sure. In, terms, in terms of the, the biggest challenges that, that you have been thinking about that might, that might present themselves? Yep. The biggest challenge for me was finding the staff that I wanted to work for me. I was very fortunate that, that Josh Reif and Jerry, um, I'm still learning how to say her last name, so I won't butcher it here. Um, they have a great familiarity with the program. And they have been unbelievable since, since all of this started. And the girl, their relationship with the players and their comfort level around the players, that's going to be, that would have been a big challenge if they were not here. So that's fantastic from that standpoint for me. And then the, the administration was amazing in going after the person that I wanted to bring with me, the, the new addition to the staff. That will be announced later on today, hopefully. And the, the experience that they bring will be unbelievable. The two assistants that I have will both have played professional, professionally at the highest levels in the game domestically here in the United States. So um, they know exactly what it takes to, to compete at the highest level. So the staff, putting together the right staff was the biggest challenge, but we've overcome that hurdle already. So that's the most exciting part for me right now. Coach, I know it's going to take a little time for you to get to know your players and get to know the team and their style and everything. Uh, but what would you say is the one thing that you want to be the hallmark for this team and any team that you play? So yesterday at training, I got to see so many things that are important to me. First off, there has to be a mentality to compete every single day in everything you do, um, taking pride in that. And, and that goes obviously on the training field, but in the classroom as well. So just, just that mentality to want to get better every single day. Um, confidence, enthusiasm, passion, all of that is, is contagious. So I want to see that from all of my players. Um, confidence that we're going to win the ball back. Confidence that we're going to do it together. Um, confidence to want the ball. Confidence to, to make good decisions on the ball when, when you're in possession of it. Um, th they're all types of things that, that I definitely look for in my players and in my team, but also a sense of family. You know, here is a, an unbelievable sense of family in this institution, in this community, and I want my players to know that they're a family in a family, if that makes sense. And so I want them to feel like this is a home away from home, and they're going to get after it on the training field, and they're going to compete against one another, but they need to leave it behind on the training field and, and really embrace each other and support each other in all other aspects of life. Build off of something that you said in, in watching uh, State the last couple of years, people might say that that mentality kind of blossomed in terms of never giving up, challenging the ball. Um, yeah. From your perspective, did you see that kind of mentality or that attitude? And if so, how much do you think that that maybe puts you at the third or fourth step as opposed to 
starting at the bottom step and, and trying to install what you want to install? Uh, absolutely. Obviously, being familiar with the SEC and, and talking to other coaches and in my previous job having to scout Mississippi State, um, that, that was absolutely 100% evident. And, and not just from players one through five, regardless of who was on the field at any given time, they were given 110%. And the energy from the players on the bench and the support that they were giving their teammates, the, that overall general feeling of enthusiasm and, and energy was, was definitely evident. And one of the reasons why I came here was I, it had to be the right fit. And I wanted to, to take over a program where the foundations, there was healthy foundations and there was forward progress and clearly I saw that when, when I saw the team play multiple times last year. And I can tell you this, that just watching yesterday, that is still there, if, if not more than ever before. So we're looking forward to continuing that momentum starting today. So. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks for Thank coming. You. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it.